Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another streamcast. Today we're gonna talk about hooks, the React hook, and how we can use it in functional components. Before we dive into the demonstration, this is going to be a three-part tutorial. The second part is going to be how we can use Redux using the hook ecosystem. And the third video is going to be how we can optimize our React app using hooks, Redux, and immutable chess. So we'll see. So stay tuned for that and do subscribe if you are interested to learning about those technologies or libraries, better say. So with that being said, let's start uh, talking about hooks. I have used the Create React App CLI and that has created a entry point component. I haven't changed anything that much, but I just updated what whatever it returns within this return block. So as you can see that basically this is a functional component, just a function and it is returning as JSX. So before having hooks, we used to think that a function component is going to be always a stateless component, right? But then we have hooks. So what exactly is a hook? Well, a hook is basically a function, a special function that let us hook into the React features. So let's say one hook is user state. We can use this user state hook to add the stateful functionality within this functional component. So that's what we are going to do today. And besides that, we will also see how we can implement the component life cycles using hooks and using uh, functional components. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to create a very simple state using the use state hook. Let's import the user state hook. Now we're going to declare a new state called count. So constant. And besides that, we are going to use another variable. Let's call it set count. And we're going to assign that to the use state. And within this parameter, we're going to pass the initial value. Within this line, we are initializing two variables. One is count and another one is set count. The count is going to be the state and its initial value is going to be whatever we pass on the parameter of the use state. So in this case, the value of count is zero. The set count is going to be a function that we use only to update this state. Let's see an example of using that and then we will talk about the use state. Now, as you can see that we are using this state inside the JSX. Now, I'm going to just add a new button here that will handle the click. On each click, it will increment the value of count. When we used to use the class-based component, we will we would have been write this dot set state. But instead of writing this dot set state, we are now going to use set count. Always remember that this set count is only responsible to update this state. Later on, we will see uh, having multiple states. Our new incremented value is going to be count plus one, and we're going to set count with our new incremented value. Save that. And now if I click on this plus one button, it's going to increment the value of the count state, right? Awesome. Now let's a real quick uh, try to create another state. So we have the idea of using multiple states within a component. So we're gonna have a fruit state let's say set fruit or we can also uh, use another name here because the naming convention is not strict and it's flexible to us so why not use update fruit and using this user state we are going to uh, give it initial value of fruit name to apple and let's say what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna just update so let's say you have you have uh, zero apple we can update the apple name with uh, with our fruit state. So let's say you have zero apple, and now if I click on this plus icon, it say you have one apple. We have two apple. Now six means we have six apples, right? So there should be a um, s after apple. So let's do that. We're gonna do simple checks here. 
let's say if the uh, incremented value is greater than one then we will use the update fruit function to update this fruit state we're going to simply add a s at the end of the fruit name so plus s so now it has said that you have zero apple you have one apple you have two apples and that's really cool so now you get the idea that how we use the state and another function to update that state within the JSX. Now let's talk about this user state, right? And what all this square bracket is all about, right? It's basically called JavaScript Array Destructuring. If you do not know about JavaScript Array Destructuring, I think you should do some research on it because it's a very important concept. But here I'll try to explain a little on array destructuring and as well as what user state is going to return. So this use the state function going to return an array that has two elements. So the first element is basically the initial value of this state. If we console log user state, as you can see that here we have an array in the console. The first value is the initial state that we have passed through its argument right here. And then we have in the second array element, we have a function that we should have been used for update some state, right? So let's say we are not going to use this, but instead we are going to do it without array destructuring. So constant, um, let's say count state is going to be use state is the initial value of zero. Now we are going to define the count state. So this is gonna be the count state and the first element. And then we are going to use the set count. And that is coming from the second element of the array that returned by the use state. So this is the state and this is the function that we will use to update this state. Save that. And this app will work pretty much the same way. Oops, there's an error. <laughs> to quickly solve this, we are just doing this hard fix, right? Okay, so now I think you 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 have the idea that why we are going to use the error destructuring because it looks good and it's easy to write and it takes less time. Also, it's a lattice feature and we are not going to use this anyway. The error destructuring is basically automatically mapping count with the first error element that returned by user state and is mapping set count with the second element that is returned by the user state. Okay, so with that being said, let's move on to another topic. In most of the applications, we will be always required to do some network request. So let's say I have here a function somewhere uh, called net request that is responsible for making a some kind of get request or whatever. But I'm gonna just console log here, say network request. And now we used to call this function within our component so we can wait for the data and then use that in our component. So let's try to do that. So since we do not have any uh, specific lifecycle stuff like a class component does have, we're just going to call that before the return statement. Save that. As you can see that it worked as we expect it to be. So when component get rendered, it call this function and the function is going to do the network request. As you can see that in the console, we have the network request. Now we are going to expect this method to be called only for the first time. But what happens when you click on the plus one? It's gonna clear the console and I'm gonna click plus one. Now, as you can see that each time I'm clicking on this plus one button and this is going to re-render uh, the component and on each re-render is going to make a new network request. And that is a horrible thing to do, right? To solve this problem, we have another hook called use effect. And if you're familiar with the React class lifecycle methods, you can think of use effect hook as a as component did mount, component did update, component will unmount, combined. So for every lifecycle, we have only one hook and it's called use effect. So let's import use effect because we definitely don't want to make network request on every re-render of the component. Use effect. And now we are going to wrap this in the use effect function. So save that 
And now we can see that on the first render, we have our network request main, but now if I click on plus one, you can see that still it's executing the net request function on every re-render to this component because by default this use effect hook function is going to run both after the first render and after every update to this component but wait we have the solutions and now we will see how we can use this use effect hook function to apply the same concept that we have for the lifecycle methods like component did mount component did update should component update and component will unmount so let's try do the component did mount lifecycle first i'm just going to add a command here this is going to be component did mount lifecycle so component did mount is invoked immediately after a component is mounted for imitating this same functionality of component did mount we need to pass an empty array as the second argument of the use effect function but all we have to do is just pass an array to the second argument of the use effect hook function now if i save it as you can see that the network request being executed for the first time when the component gets rendered but now if I click on plus one, uh, this specific net request function is not going to re-render each time. Now that is all for component did mount. Now let's implement component did update. Now remember what component did update lifecycle does, it basically going to re-render every time we made any update within our component. And this is the default behavior of the use effect. We just have to say use effect and we can just pass some function here. And I'm just gonna console log component did update lifecycle. If I now save that, now you will see that we have the net request for the first time and as we have a render and so component did update lifecycle should console this text and it does. Now if I click on the plus one button on all re-renders, this block is getting executed. So this is our component did update using the use effect hook. Now let's talk about should component update. Should component update has a very good impact when we use to use class-based component in terms of optimization to get rid of any unwanted uh, re-renders we used to use the should component update. And now to imitate this same functionality of should component update, all we have to do is to pass the state itself within the second argument of the use effect hook function. So this is how we are going to do this. Here's the function that should get executed and here is going to be the, the state itself. We're gonna just simply use count state and then we are going to console log here. Say count gets an update. Now as you can see that the count gets an update is only being called when we update this count state. Now we only left with one more life cycle and that is a very important one. It's called component will unmount. To implement component will mount, we will require one more component. I'm just going to create a new function component. Uh, let's call it a user and say user.js. Now that I have my uh, functional component called user, import that in app.js. And I'll try to show the component here. So let's say that uh, when the count value is greater than 5, we will hide the user component. Okay, that's great. We can just say that value of count is greater than, let's say, one. We are going to hide the user component. And now let's try to use the use effect to make use of component will unmount lifecycle. Use effect. This is our effect function. Now to imitate the functionality of component will unmount, all we have to do is to return a function from this use effect hook. So let's return function. All right, so now as you can see that I have net network request, I have component did update, count gets an update. And when the user's component gets unmounted, then we have this goodbye user's console being logged. 
so only one time that goodbye users being called so that's the component will unmount using use effect gonna add the comment component will unmount lifecycle and so today we'll learn about react hooks and how we can implement the component life cycles using the react hooks and we also learn about two different hooks one is use state and another one is use effect we learn about the what use state does and what it returns and we learn about how we can use use effect to imitate all the life cycles that we require to um, build the applications i think that's all for today uh, if this video really helped please do subscribe I will also upload this code base into GitHub and the repository link will be made available within the, this video description block. And comment below your suggestions uh, if there's anything that I can improve to better explain this concept. So thank you for watching the video and have a good day.